I mean, I I can't. Gosh, I I this is something I'm going to end up tonight feeling really guilty that I didn't mention so and so or so and so, but um, I have just seen so many good speakers that really stretch the envelope. Um, both uh, Bill Stainton and um, Brian Walter are two people that, Bill's the one I told you that has some it, very programmed but incredibly effective interaction. Um, and he is a drummer, and so he will, if he has a band on stage, he could start playing with the band, and then he gets up and walks out to the front, and it's like, oh, my violin teacher quit in the middle of a lesson. I mean, I, there is no way I can compete on music. But I mean, there are just some, there's some folks that just have some very clever um, personal things that they can bring to a presentation. And um, uh, I'm trying to think of some others, and like I said, I will remember them yeah. tonight and lie awake all night cataloging them. <laughs> well, would you say then that it's important for each person to identify some approach or some element of their own personality that they can exploit in a positive way in their speaking? Yeah, I, I think, I think you could say that. Um, I also think it's the idea is that you should already have a personality before you speak, and letting that show, uh, and letting it even show in its vulnerability, um, can can work in your favor because then people can identify with you, and once they are connected with you you can get away with murder. Um, this is <laughs> one, of, one of my most memorable presentations was I spoke in um, Amsterdam at an international humor conference. And the guy who spoke before me was an American and he was a vice president of a large armament company who apparently was humorous, but he didn't strike the audience as all that Killed him dead, right? Yeah, yeah, right. He really killed him. Yes, I, I'm gonna have to use that line. And then the next person that got up um, was, um, let's see, Dutch or Belgium? Might have been Belgium. And somebody in the second row, their cell phone rang, and she answered it and began talking. And he stopped the whole audience, you know, the whole speech, everything, and he said, "Well, we'll wait till you're done." And she went, "Okay," and she just went on talking. And it was like holy cow. Yeah. And so when I got up, mm -hmm. I did, I, I have a, a phrase I use when I speak in Holland. When I start the speech, I say, Dank niet dat ik niet Nederlands spreek, maar ik spreek Engels, so dat hulie goed kunnen oefenen. Which means, it's not that I don't speak Dutch, yeah. I'm just speaking English so that you can practice. Do you speak Dutch? Yeah, very good. Oh, very good. Oh, I am totally impressed. But what happens is my accent, as I'm sure you noticed, is not very good. Mm -hmm. And so they know I don't really speak Dutch, <laughs> but they appreciate that I tried, you know, and, and it got them on my side. And while I was speaking, somebody else in one of the couple first rows, their phone rang. And they picked it up. I said, we've been there before. <laughs> Don't go there. It's already been done. And she, oh, you're right. <laughs> you know. And it was because I had that little bit of yeah. connection that I could do this. Because there are you know, several hundred people in this room. Right. And so she just hung up, and we went on with, with the show. You know? and, and then I had um, one of the things that I use in speaking and we could talk about this at another time, but I had, I used a rubber chicken. And I had the rubber chicken under the lectern, but it was an open lectern. And for some reason, it was in this bucket, because it was the only place to hide it, because when it's an open lectern, you've got to do something. So I'm in the middle of the speech, and boing, this head of this chicken comes popping up, and the whole front row, they were the only ones that could see it. <laughs> they all started cracking up. <laughs> and I'm going, why are they laughing? You know, <laughs> I looked at Oh, okay. You know, and it was sort of like that's supposed to come up later, but as long as you know he wants to talk to you now, I'll let him come up. And you know, I said I did my little rubber chicken bit, you know, and and that I could be casual with him because I'd already 
gotten that connection. Um, it would have been horrible if I hadn't, you know, because you can look like you're totally incompetent. And, you know, here, props are falling out all over the place, and, you know. And so that, I think, is a really important issue, is once you have that connection, uh, assuming you aren't, like, a total stiff, you know, <laughs> ramrod type person, you can, you can get away with murder, you know, maybe not literally, but close. Yeah.